Hi, I'm Tim Abel, a.k.a. Balthazar Kane, a.k.a. Circus Kane, and you are watching the 13th Werewolf. Let the hounds of hell loose! <laughs> hey everybody, I'm the 13th Wolf Man. You know what, this is another edition of Sit Down, and you know who I have with me today? I have Chris Ray, that's right, writer, producer, director, and... The, the the director behind Citizen Kane and of course Tim Abel, Balthazar Kane himself. Welcome to sit down. Hey Wolfie, nice to have you. Nice to have us here. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct you, man. You said Citizen Kane. It's called Circus Kane. <laughs> did I say Citizen Kane? Yes, you did, sir. <laughs> I, did I don't even times. like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> When we were filming, I would say Cir uh, uh, Citizen Kane all the time. Chris would go, Tim, Circus Kane, not Citizen Kane. <laughs> Touch of Evil is my favorite Orson Welles movie. So, I mean, I, I don't even watch Citizen Kane. That's just weird. Okay. <laughs> my mistake, writer, producer, director, and the director of Circus Kane. Thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with it, man. Uh I, I do want to, if you don't mind, can we talk a little bit about your father, Fred Olin? We can. Okay, I mean, it, it, your father was a, a he was an incredible. Well, he's he's does he still making movies? I am I'm sitting in a New York hotel room waiting for him to arrive in two days, and I'm producing a film for him. So we are still, and he's <laughs> making films, and we are making them together. So. Oh, that's cool to hear, because that was one question I was going to ask. I mean, being the son of Fred, were you were you dragged to a lot of sets as a kid, or what was he? Were you home when he was off filming? So he was he was he raised me as a single father, and my life consisted as a kid was school set school set school set. Um, wow. And believe it or not, I, I wanted nothing to do with this business. I mean, Tim knew me when I was 16, 15, 16 years old. At about 19 years old, I, I went and joined the Navy, and I, 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 I disappeared for about 15 years. Um, so, you know, again, I, for some reason, I just didn't like, didn't like the business. And then I went in the military and ended up being a photographer for the Navy. So, of course, you know, I ended up going in full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so you guys have known each other forever. Yes. Um, what we was it? I think I think was I four, like fourteen. Yeah, you were. Uh, yeah, I I did the first the first movie I did with your dad was a film uh, called Attack of the Sixty Foot Centerfold, and he did it with R Roger Corman. Oh and, yes, uh, I know it well. Yes, and Ted Monty was in that as well. As, and I knew Ted from back in Maryland, and uh, I didn't even know he was out here, but. That's right. That's, that's the first film I did with Fred, with with Chris's dad. And then, Chris, hey Chris, what was the one where we played the um, you played the giant, the monster in the suit? Hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah, I was I was thinking of a seahorse because we we kind of joked about the costume, but we did a movie called Hybrid that Fred directed, and uh, Ted Monty was also in that, and uh, it was a, sort of a post apocalyptic world. And Chris was where he would wear this 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 uh, the, this outfit the, the the monster costume you know and chase people around and kill everybody and uh, that's the one where I really remember you know working with Chris on a daily basis for the for the filming of that film but uh, yeah it's been a long time I bet you I probably I've probably done 16 films with his dad and then how many you and I Chris five four or five well let's see you know it, it was funny the the first film we've actually did together um was mercenaries um yeah and so we did mercenaries then we did uh dick dixter um and I, I did the small part in the, in the one the uh uh los angeles uh the uh um the more tea at, uh, with uh nia peebles right but i, I produced that I, I did, okay. yeah that, that I, I was the lp on that i didn't direct it um okay but yeah for directing it, it was mercenaries dick dixter and then I think this was the third one. Third one. Wow. That's that's great to see a friendship last that long, and especially, you know, when it comes to movies. You, you hear about some people that are like, yeah, I made 20 movies with them. I can't stand the person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, we, we Mercenaries was one of those films where I had been trying to work with Tim for years, and finally there was a part 
but the, the, the part didn't speak much. And I was trying to find a character or somebody who could pull off a character that was strong enough to make this guy menacing, but, and, and still not have, you know, not say much. And, you know, when you're, when you're around people, Zoe Bell, Vivica Fox, Christina Loken, uh, Bridget Nielsen, Cynthia Rothrock, who, who, what's the one guy we could put in here that would be menacing? And I, I convinced Against Cynthia producer, Rothrock? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I China O'Brien herself? Yeah. I, but I, I was able to convince the producers to let, let me have Tim come in. And literally from day one, I got a phone call, you know, asking me who this guy was. And I told them, and they're like, he's, he's great. Just keep, keep him going. And so, you know, it, from that point, though, we've done, like I said, we've done three films now in the last three years, where before, it, you know, it was zero. <laughs> so. Grigory Babshikov. Yep. Wow. So, so uh, Chris, you, you, your father's Fred, Olin Ray, you're Chris. I mean, you guys have been in, you've been dealing with movies forever. What's the one bit of advice for the people that are watching this, you know, that want to get into the movies? I mean, whether it's producing, writing, directing. What's the one bit of advice you could give them to, to help them along the way? Know your crew. I mean, the one thing that, that did me justice, and I, I still live by it today, was that I've done, I've worked in every, almost every department on a film crew other than makeup and wardrobe. Um, you know, I've done, I've worked with art department. I, I've worked with, I've worked as a PA. I've done AD work. Uh, I'm a, you know, I've done all this stuff and it helps. Because you know, making a film, you know what your crew is doing, what they what they need to do, what pieces they need, and you you keep people coming back because you know how to treat them. So to me, that was that you know I'm a I'm a people person, so I like the idea of, of keeping the crew happy. Um, you know, so it's probably something you don't hear very often, but that's that's that would be my advice. That's a great piece of advice. So now let's talk about Circus Kane. This is a crazy movie, and I, uh, I loved it, man. I mean, I loved everything about this. This is a true. This really felt a lot like an. This episode throwback of Wicked Horror Show to me. Um, where's this? Where's Where's this story come from? Well, it, it, so me and James um, have been trying to do a film together for a while. James came to me and said that he had a possibility of 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 an idea for a film, but we, we needed to kind of come up with something. So I gave him what I thought, you know, I wanted to do something kind of like House on Haunted Hill, but with something that people, you know, weren't, weren't used to. And I brought up the idea that, you know, what about the escape rooms that we have in, you know, the, with the big blow up in Los Angeles and everything where the escape rooms are showing up all over the US. What about tying kind of a House on Haunted Hill with escape rooms and then the design of it really just came from me liking the fact, you know, that my father did the, um, he had the sideshow for years and he, you know, always freak show stuff always around the house and just that kind of feeling. Um, I, I just felt like something like this would, would work well with that in, in twine with the, you know, the house on Haunted Hill type of throwback. Cool. And, Tim, uh, Balthazar Kane, man, one of the most energetic, enigmatic uh, people you would ever see on screen. I mean, did you get, did you ever get totally exhausted playing the character, or was you you were always charged? Yeah, you know what? It, it's um, people always ask about that, about the because uh, it's about a five hour process to get the makeup put on on the first day that we did it, and then they would get a little bit quicker uh, as the days went on, but it gave me time to really think about who the character was and what I was going to, about the scenes I was going to be doing, but I'll tell you, when you get all that makeup on, you got the hair, you got the costume on, uh, picking up my cane or whatever props I have, I'm a big person, I love props and shit, but once I pick up that uh, and I, I look in the mirror, it really was, I felt like, you know, like uh, 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 P.T. Barnum, you know, it's like, it's showtime. And yeah. it really, it just never got tiresome. It didn't get, you know, people say, well, did you get hot, get sweaty? I said, you know what? The only thing that really, I felt sweaty was my hands because my hands are in these, these rubber gloves that look like burned up hands. And that was really the only thing that got really got sweaty or that I felt like 
I didn't even feel comfortable with that. I mean, the teeth, trying to talk with the teeth was the one thing that uh, at first I, I, it took me a while to get used to. And we pretty much thought I was going to have to ADR the entire film because it sounded like I had a, I thought like a, a bucket of marbles in my fucking mouth. But, um, you know, it ended up working for the character. It didn't have to ADR anything. And um, it really was uh, something about mentally becoming that character or bringing that character out. And it was just playtime. And I tell you, it, it just was like I didn't get tired at all. And uh, it just was the most wonderful, fascinating experience as an actor. And, uh, you know, I just, um, again, you couldn't go. I couldn't go too big. You know, I kept waiting for Chris to go. Right. Dude, bring it back a little bit, man. You're waiting. <laughs> You're, waiting. You're out there in fucking Pluto, man. Bring it back. And it was. Uh, it played really well because the opening scene is such a juxtaposition to the last twenty minutes of the of, of the of the film. Right. And so it was this wacky, crazy. Is he is he fucking whack that bad? Is he really that crazy, or is he just performing? You know. And I think as you watch it, you can make the, your own conclusion. But Victoria and I have. You know, have a have a great relationship in the in the film, and my myself and young Travis in the opening have a great relationship, and the other characters that I interact with. But it really is, um, uh, I don't know. I tell you that that experience of playing and bringing the life Bathazar was just fucking awesome. I mean, as an actor, man, and I hope we have a chance to to make many many more of these things because I think oh. he's such an iconic character, man. Well, I, 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 I will I will interrupt just real fast so, so people do know this that. Other than the fact of giving Tim the look, his question to me was how I wanted the character, and my response to him was, what do you think? And it's because, again, great actors, you you don't really need to tell them what 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 you're looking for, because once you give them the pieces, i.e., we gave, you know, we gave them the outfit and the dreadlocks and all these pieces, and once that happened, I mean, Tim, like he's saying, he just looked in the mirror and he did. We did the the opening stuff first, so that we could use the stuff practically throughout the film. But there was no notes. I mean, literally, Tim was like, "Do, do any notes?" No. I mean, it, it was so he nailed it when he, when he first walked into the tent. That there was nothing for us to say to him other than you know we we would have him back up and redo a line or something, but nothing character wise that we ever had to change with him. So how how much would you have freaked? Tim, if he said, go bigger. <laughs> I, I would have gone, I would have gone, I would have way, I'd gone way out there, brother, I tell you. I, I tell you, you know, it's, 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 there was still more in the reserve. I could have gone way out there, you know, but it, it really, I tell you, it was balancing act of, of me and so, certain characters as we go on, you know, when you start to see some of the, 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 I'll say the twists and turns of the, of the ending, when, it's it's really all a show. You really see it's about the show, because it's like, well, he's not really a crazy fucker as we thought he was. He's oh, he's okay. It's about the fucking show. It's about being the greatest entertainer. And even though you know these kids are dying, it's about putting on a great show. And it even says it. It's, it's part of the, the testament to Chris and to James and Zach for the writing. Is you know it's about your deaths are going to be fucking immortalized. You know you are going to be. It'd be like you Wolf being on being. Being there in the House of Horrors, there at that Circus Kane Mansion, and say, "Wolf, you're gonna have the best ratings. You're gonna be, you're gonna be a fucking <laughs> immortalized, brother. Your death, your decapitation. People are gonna fucking talk about this for a hundred years." And it's like, you know, that 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 was kind of like the, the mentality, you know, of, of of this character of going way out there. You know, go big, go home, man. You know what? Yeah, he, he Tim, was... the, the the one line you say, man. In, in, in the middle of all this nonsense, you, you literally stop. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. That was Act Three. We're on Act Four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been playing the monologuing monster. You know, now <laughs> we're in Act Four. This is the denouement. You know, yes, it's. I just, I mean, I love the character. I, love, I mean, such a, and he's a very smart fucker. You know, a smart, well-read yeah. guy. That, uh, that that's what I wanted to bring to it too. That he wasn't just some fucking. You know Jason Voorhees, who's out there just to kill people for blood. It's like there's a reason behind this, and he's a he's a he's a it's very a very smart. Reason, but there's a reason. <laughs> yes. yes, we can rationalize anything. Uh, the the other thing I liked about this movie, and uh, Chris, if you could talk about it a little, is there was there there's some scenes from time to time that have overlays. You know um, where 
Well, like when when Circus Kane does his uh, ads, you'll see like a he'll be talking. You'll see like an overlay overlay of an eye or something that that takes up a little bit of. How hard is that to do nowadays? Because that back in back in the eighties, they would just like overlay film over, you know. You know, it's actually really easy, but it, it's finding the shot to do the overlay because, you know, like in the beginning when he's talking to the to the to the kid and he's talking about misdirection and he's talking about um, all these all these things, finding the right set of you know the take the the right image to put overlay, what well, that was the hard part. The the actual overlay itself was a lot easier now with with Adobe Premiere and Final Cut and so. That's that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna cut this a little short tonight. I know Leo, who is recording this for me, needs to get some sleep. So, um, if anyone is looking for you, Tim, where can they find you? Uh, on Twitter, it's at T, as in Tango, A is in Alpha, B is in Bravo, E is in Echo, L is in Lima, L is in Lima. That's uh, so on Twitter and on Facebook, just Tim Abel. And then on uh, Instagram, it's Tim Abel 2010. And Chris? Uh, Facebook is Chris Olin Ray. Uh, Twitter and Instagram are both at Tiki Terrors. Okay, cool. Well, I got to tell you guys, you know, again, this is the movie I really enjoyed, uh, Circus Kane. I want everyone, when you get a chance to see this, because it's going to be out on VOD this weekend. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Friday. And it will be in Redbox October 10th. Uh, please yep. check it out. This is worth it, man. This is a fun movie. It's a good, good 80s throwback for me. Horror film for Chris and Tim, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and of course, I'm on the prowl.